Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Dothan-Hager football. This is the last home game, regular season home game for the dothan High Tigers against the Smith Station Panthers. I'm Jeff Speed along with Ron Herring from Pittman Field where we have a big area game tonight. That's right, Jeff. Smith Station coming into the ball game at three and five, which is not indicative of the type of ball that they've played this year. Uh, and the, the ball game tonight has big implications as far as the the region goes and the playoff spots as uh, tonight with a Dothan High win and an Enterprise win at Central of Phoenix City, Dothan High would be able to go into the playoffs in the fourth spot in the region. There, uh, there will be a three-way tie, which is, is confusing by uh, whenever you look at it and finding the tiebreaker system uh, for Alabama High School Athletic Association would uh, uh, in the event of a Dothan High win and an Enterprise win uh, Dothan High would be in a three-way tie with Opelika and Central of Phoenix City. Now the three-way tie uh, will give Opelika third spot because they have beaten Auburn. It goes to not a head-and-head -head, but uh who's beat the highest ranked team in the region. So uh, Opelika having beaten Auburn earlier in the year would uh, give them the third spot and then the head to head would go to Dothan and Central of Phoenix City where we had beaten them and would give us the fourth spot and uh, put us on the road for the first week of the playoffs. Well, and that's what we're hoping uh, here in the ball game that the Tigers come back and win it, uh, bring this game in. As you see, here come the Tigers now. Uh, and they are ready. They're fired up. Went out a while ago. The captains for the Tigers, Carlos Frazier and Paul Reeves, uh, Dothan won the toss, and they deferred to the second half uh, to where the uh, Panthers are going to get the ball first, and they'll have first option of running the ball. And we'll just see what happens. We hope to see the Dothan Tiger defense come up big tonight as the uh, Smith Station Panthers have two real quick running backs uh, that we'll see a lot of tonight, uh, especially in number four, number two, I believe, are the numbers. Um, look for a lot of things out of them. The quarterback's got a good arm. They uh, do pass the ball. They run the ball uh, seemingly very well. And it's just uh, it's going to depend really on a defensive game from both ends, the Tigers and the Panthers, as to who comes out on top tonight. That is right, Jeff. And uh, coming into the game, Smith Station has allowed an average of 21.9 points per the game uh, points per game they've scored 16.25 points per game so uh, the Tigers uh, I've got their stats somewhere the Tigers coming into the game averaging 20.75 points per game and giving up 16.1 per one points per game which is gonna uh, as far as paper goes be pretty evenly matched yeah, and the Tigers, you know, coming off of a big win last Friday night against uh, city rival Northview Cougars, who, by the way, we'd like to say congratulations to them last night as they beat uh, Opelika by a final score of 10-3. Uh, congratulations to that bunch over there. They had uh, had a pretty rough season for the last uh, three years, uh, well, four years, actually. They came through last night with a big win against a uh, area rival in Opelika, and we're glad that they were able to break that streak and hopefully get Give some momentum and encouragement back in that Northview program as uh, they come into the end of this year and then start out of next year. Drew Johnston said to kick it off. He gets a high end over end kick that's going to sail down to about the six yard line. Number one, Cordero Lockhart takes it there, comes up the left side, and he is stopped by John Hughes, Maurice Adams, Kenny Reese, and I want for sure who else from the Tiger return team there was able to get down on that. So the Panthers will take over, Ryan, first and 10 from their own 22 against a tough, tough Dothan Tiger defense. They will, number 12, Terrell Stringer, the quarterback for Smith Station. Uh, brings them to the line as they go no huddle to start off with. We've seen that throughout the year, teams coming in going no huddle against the Tigers. Ball on the 22-yard line. The handoff is to, uh, it's a fake, number 12. Stringer keeps the ball. He faked it to number 24, Terrence Farrell. He's 
and uh, to, and kept the ball off the uh, right side and found running room and uh, picked up about eight and a half yards on the first play, Jim. Well, and they, they gave the tackle to Ontarius Adams, but I thought that was uh, Dent that was in on the tackle, but I couldn't tell if it was a nine or a five, uh, but nonetheless, a good stop there and a great play fake. Second and one. Stringer under center. He's going to fake on an option to Farrow, keep it around the left end. Adams got into the backfield there, and what, what did make the stop uh, for the Tigers line is he started to turn inside, and Adams just would not let him go anywhere. So no gain on the play. He's going to bring up a third and one. And uh, Jeff, it looks like Smith Station is pretty comfortable with their quarterback Stringer keeping the ball. Well, he's had two good uh, runs there and brings him into a third and one situation. Let's see what happens if the Tiger defense can come up big here. Stringer under center. He's going to fake the Pharaoh again, keep around the right side. I don't know if he got it. Looks like he's going to make it by about maybe a half of a yard. He will have the first down. Uh, nope. Well, are they going to measure it? No, they're moving it. He's, uh, he does have the first down. Yeah, the white hat uh, pointed forward, so I guess that means first and 10. No measurement. Let's go, boys. Let's play ball. That's right. Uh, so Smith Station is still in business. They're on 33-yard line. Game just underway. 10-10 to go in the first quarter. Stringer's going to give on the reverse to the motion man that's number four harry cox who we saw a lot in the in the films from uh the smith station game against auburn which they did win uh, auburn's only region loss of the year and uh he's he picks up about two yards to bring up a second and eight jeff there's not much time in between plays as smith station Going with the armband offense, running running it from the line, never going to the huddle. Well, we've watched that, you know, and a lot of teams, like we said earlier, have fared well against the Tigers defensively by doing that. And uh, Stringer's going to take and fake the Pharaoh again and hand off around the right end to Harry Cox on another misdirection type play. I believe Jason Austin got in on that one. Yes, he did. Thank you, Mr. PA announcer once again. I did believe that Jason got it, and he just uh, agreed with me on what I said. Jason Austin uh, stepping up big for the Tigers here in the second half of the season. Of course, he's been a steady player over the last couple of years for Duncan High on the defensive line. He is a senior. Gonna bring up a third and a long seven, uh, call it eight. Stringer drops back to pass, throws a strike to number eight. It looks like he's going to get a good mark, too, Ron, by the official. Jara Roscoe. Landry Bodie on the stop. I'm, uh, the, the, the only pass that they've attempted uh, here early in the game, and he threw a strike, he threw the ball on the line to Roscoe, but uh, Landry Bodie's able to stop him short going to force Smith Station into a punting situation with a fourth and a little less than a yard. The Tigers need to be patient here again, not jump off sides. As we said, we've watched the Tigers uh, time and time again this year. Defense come up big. Now the Panthers are going to take a timeout, and uh, while they're taking that timeout, we'll talk about what uh, Coach Kelly was speaking about before the ball game was. The quarterback is, he don't have a lot of speed, but the quarterback for the Panthers, he's got the poise, and he, he watches his receivers well. He's a good passer, and then he's got a good backfield. When they run the split back formation, either one of the runners, or if they come out of the sweep like they did a while ago with the end around type sweep, they've got good speed outside. So that's what the Tigers are really looking at right now is trying to stop that speed, use their uh, agility on the defense and their quickness to try to cut down the running game for uh, the Panthers and make him go into a passing game where, you know, the, the Tigers have uh, defended well all year. Tiger defense uh, holding them on their second series. Uh, that, that was the quarterback, and it still is the quarterback, number 12, Stringer, going back to punt. 
So with his athleticism, the Tigers need to, to watch out for any wrinkles here that Smith Station wants to throw in early in the game. I was just going to ask you, reckon we can see a wrinkle here? Yeah, here they go splitting out now, so we better look out. There it is. They give uh, the direct snap to number 26, Garrett Fuller, and he's going to have his first down as he gets over the 45-yard line to about the 46. Well, the Panthers start out with a little wrinkle there, Ryan, to uh, open up the game and enough for the first down, but we got a legal procedure that's going to be called against the Panthers, which is going to back them up five, and where this time you can bet they're going to punt with uh, about six yards to go for the first down. Well, a break for Dothan High School there is the, uh, the direct snap to number 26, Garrett Fuller. He did pick up the first down, but uh, uh, as you said, the uh, Illegal procedure is going to bring it back and they're going to force them into a situation where we're pretty sure that they're going to have to punt. I looked for that and I didn't see anybody, uh, you know, moving before the ball was snapped. So, but like we said again, the officials are down there, they're doing a good job. We're going to let them have it. It's a low snap. Stringer gets it, uh, gets off a punt. It's going to be a low line drive punt that's going to bounce about the 34 yard line and take a Smith Station roll down to the 27. Punt roll down. So the Tigers take over first and 10 with 7.37 remaining in the first quarter. The Tigers will take over first and 10 from their own 27 yard line. As they were able to, the Tiger defense came up big. They were able to stop the Panthers from Smith Station and the Tigers offense will come in and see if we can put something together and put some points on the board. Contrell Adams uh, once again takes his spot at quarterback, Jeff, and. Uh, Look for maybe for Dothan how to put something together is, is we need to, to to gain some momentum and uh, get get going early. There goes Keon and Young on the first to Keon Young. He's got a lot of green as he breaks loose out of the backfield, and that's going to be six quick points for the Dothan Tigers uh, as they get on the board first with a long strike run. A uh, great play and a great run there by Keon Young as he went outside. He kind of uh, gave the defenders a little bit of inside look and then turned the ball outside, broke through the line, got in the secondary, and with his speed, there was no way that they were going to catch him, and he was off to the races. Touchdown, Tigers. Good to see Keon in the ball game as we uh, understood he had a slight separation of the shoulder last week in the Northview game, in the latter part of the Northview game. Drew Johnson in the attempt the extra point. The kick is up and good. So with 7.21 left in the first quarter, Dothan High jumps out seven to nothing, Jeff, and just like we were talking about, getting some uh, getting some momentum early. And uh, there you have, when in the middle of talking about it, Keon bounces one outside and, and breaks it off for a long touchdown run. Well, I was surprised to see him come in the backfield in the starting role tonight. Uh, as we said, back at the Northview game last Friday night on about the next to the last play of the ball game, Keon separated his shoulder, his right shoulder, and the coaches wasn't for sure if he'd even be able to dress this week or not, but he was able to pick it up and uh, get in there, and, and they handed the ball off to him, and uh, like we said, with all the green there, he breaks loose, goes uh, distance, and in for the score, a big, big six-point first play for the Dothan Tigers to put them up 7-0 at this point, and that is a big boost for the Tiger offense as well as the Tiger defense. That is right. Uh, Johnston teeing it up, and Jeff, on the touchdown play, I apologize if I was talking over, I couldn't hear you. We're having some technical difficulties up here with some headphones. Uh, I can't hear. You've got headphones, and, and I don't. And uh, I looked up and noticed that, that you didn't have your set on, and I was like, okay, no wonder he's kind of backing away and motioning around. So, But I think we've got that corrected now. We should be on the road to recovery. Uh, a kind cameraman swapped headphones with me. He's going to get that other set squared away. Johnston gets a high end-over-end kick that uh, Smith Station back. Number four, Harry Cox is going to take about the one-yard line. He gets out. Breaks it around the left side, gets out to about the 24-yard line. A good, a good return. Looked like Dothan Howe was going to be able to pin him deep. Well, that's the speed.
speed of the Panther uh, backs that they've got, even on the kickoff return team, you see he picked the ball up and he showed a little burst of speed once he got past a couple of the guys on the uh, coverage team. He went outside, and if he hadn't stepped out of bounds, had another 10 yards uh, running room on the side, you know, it could have been that his speed would have shown then. We've got a new back checked into the ball game. That's number nine, Mitchell Dean. Mitchell under center. He's going to give to Dean on the first down play up uh, off the right side, and Dean's going to get up to about the 25-yard line, pick up about two yards. A good stop made by number 11, John Hughes, there as he came through the line, and he was able to knock him down before he could get any momentum going uh, north northward to the north end zone. John Hughes, another one of the steady senior performers for the Dothan High School defense. Going to bring up a second and eight for Smith Station. Ball is on the 25-yard line. Tigers need a big defensive stand here and go ahead and score again. It would not hurt my feelings one bit. I see Hughes coming on the blitz. Mitchell back to pass. He's going to get it off to number two, Jared Ashford. And good open field Sorry. tackle. Good open field tackle made by Fred Foster to save a uh, uh, possibility of a touchdown there. And that's what we talked about earlier. The quarterback for the Panthers has got a good eye. And he reads the defense very well. And there we went with no safety. Everybody was up close to the line, in the in the linebacker areas and on, on the line. And he just dumps it across the middle on a little fake handoff up the middle. And there they go. I, I called him Mitchell just a minute ago. The quarterback is still Stringer. Ball on the 42-yard line, first and 10. He's going to give to number 24. Back in the ball game, that's Farrow. Up the middle, and he's going to pick up about a yard. Back on the play right back, uh, Ron, with the pass conversion there. The Tigers ran with a blitz with John Hughes, and there I noticed they blitzed again. But thank goodness we had a run going, so the Tigers are trying to pull something over with them, uh, blitzing earlier to try to keep them out of that passing situation, I believe, and make them run the ball. Second and nine. Stringer under center, uh, Farrow in the backfield. He's going to fake to Farrow and keep over the right side, and he's not going anywhere this time. A play that was successful earlier. But uh, Dothan High doing a good job of defending it there in the middle of the Dothan defense, uh, doing a good job here early on of uh, st uh, stopping it up there. Yeah, that was a uh, stop made there by a host of Tigers, Derek Creekmore, um, uh, Paul Reeves. I see a number of the Tigers that had gotten up there that did a great job of closing that hole and not letting him get through and uh, make any running positive yardage out of it. Going to bring up a third and uh, about – Seven, long eight, uh, long seven, seven and a half yards. Seven and three footballs. Seven and three footballs. Seven, three footballs and a hot dog. Mid, uh, Stringer's going to drop back. Great pass over the middle. I was frozen by the play action there to Dean. And he throws a strike across the middle to number four, Cox. A great play in the backfield and uh, secondary for the Tigers also by uh, Ontarius Adams. Did a good job by uh, stopping him before he was able to break loose. Smith Station moving the change. Got the ball on the Dothan High 40-yard line. Dean in the backfield. Stringer back to pass again. He throws another strike over to about the 32-yard line. The uh, Tigers are going to have to adjust to the passing attack of the Panthers because, as I said earlier, the quarterback does a very good job reading the defense, and there he threads the needle again. Uh, Ron, I want to go back and correct myself. I called Ontrell Adams Ontarius. I don't know where I came up with that at. I think I was just so happy he made the stop. <laughs> Ontarius sounds like a, a Greek god. The officials are going to take a timeout. This is one of those uh, medical uh, official timeouts that they have to do if there's a, a questionable injury or something that shows any type of uh, thing, uh, injury on that player's part, they have to come out for one play until they get it taken care of. I'm sorry, covered or whatever. Second and three. 
Stringer's going to go back to pass again. He's going to complete it to Cox, but on trail, on Terrius, whatever you want to call him, he's there to make a big play there and uh, drop Cox for a loss. Well, Entrell saw that play coming. I saw him kind of creeping up. He saw the back come out. When he did, Entrell broke on it when the quarterback made the pass across. As we said, Entrell came up, did a great job defensively, and stopped him from getting any uh, uh, big gain out of that. Going to bring up a third and six from the 35, 36-yard line. Stringer hitting everybody in, the, in place. He's going to drop back to pass again. And the ball is just overthrown as he had number 14, who's not listed in the program. A good job by Tyreek uh, Dury also on the coverage as he came up and as the ball went through his hands, he was able to make the, the play on them. And it was just, uh, uh, you know, it was a stop and play even though he did not catch the ball. So that's going to bring up a fourth and six for Smith Station. Looks like the offense is going to stay on the field. Dothan High need to be wary here of uh, trying to draw them off sides. Of course, a uh, five-yard penalty is not going to get them a first down, but they do snap the ball. He throws it out to number four, Cox, who gets out. Uh, he picks up the first down. He gets down to about the 27-yard line of Dothan High. So on a fourth and, fourth and six, they have enough confidence in Stringer to, to throw the ball. He throws it to a wide open Cox. Who's Paul Reeves, to, I'm sorry, Ron, go ahead. Able to pick up the first down. Paul Reeves came up and made a big stop for the Tigers. And if you notice, they're spreading the defense out and kind of being able to work that little passing game in. I see uh, Dothan doing some substituting. Jeremy Dent trying to get off the field and, and saw he wasn't going to be able to. So uh, he wisely calls a timeout to keep from uh, Getting a penalty in pinning Dothan High any deeper than, than what they are here with their backs against the wall. Well, I tell you, uh, you know, I, I've said it twice. Coach Kelly's talked about it, like I said this afternoon, about the quarterback, uh, the arm that he's got. He is showing some great passing ability, uh, capability so far in the first quarter. Uh, on this drive, especially, he's moving the Panthers down the field. He's doing a great job finding his receiver. He's making good, quick, hard passes that are sticking in. He's not throw. He's thrown one ball that was kind of wild, and it was just out of the reach of the receiver, Cox. And uh, he's the guy's doing a great job against the Tiger defense. I believe that uh, that one pass that you're talking about, the one that was overthrown to Cox a while ago, is the only incompletion that he's got. Uh, I don't. We don't have anything to keep any stats here, but uh, he's he's got to be six for seven or seven for eight here on this drive. Fake is the Dean. Stringer keeps it around the right side, picks up about five from uh, maybe six yards. Looked like he was stopped by number six, Paul Reeves, and John Hughes, number 11. He is a, he's a very deceiving quarterback, Ron. The Smith Station doing a good job of, of misdirection, uh, keeping the speed of Dothan House defense at bay, you know. Uh, faked us off a few times. Stringer's going to fake again to Dean, and he's going to be caught in the backfield. Is that John Hughes? Yes, it is. Number 11, John Hughes, did a good job of getting in the backfield and stopping that play from going outside. Uh, you know, this is something that, that that the Tigers are going to have to adjust to here because I'm going to tell you, they're mixing them up, and, and they've got the defense kind of stunned right now as to what they're going to run. Going to bring up a third and six from the 23-yard line. under center sets Cox in motion he's going to give the Cox around the right side on the reverse a great job there it looked like uh, uh, was that Jason Austin that got in the backfield slowed him down and then Thomas was able to come in and finish him off I wasn't really for sure if that's who it was but it, it appeared that Austin had gotten into the backfield and made him turn in and tripped him just a little bit it's going to be no gain for Cox I saw John Hughes also in on the play Gonna bring up a fourth and six, and uh, looks like Smith Station is gonna go for it again. And if you notice, they're running the same formation on offense, just switching the sides. Stringer back to pass, gonna get pressured, and uh, gonna throw an interception. Fred Foster 
picks the ball about the 10-yard line, gets it up about the 17-yard line. Uh, so a good job by Dothan High as he was pressured. Well, they had him in the backfield. They had so much pressure on him. I think watching the poise that Stringer has had so far in this ball game, I think what he did was just force the ball into the area where there was two receivers, but he didn't realize there was five defenders there also. Looks like Dothan High's got a player down. I believe that's number 17, Terrell Brooks. Unable to see what they're working on. And we hate that because Terrell Brooks being one of the backs for the Tigers uh, with Keon Young injured, that's uh, if, if Terrell is injured with some type of a bad injury, that's gonna put the ball back in the arms of uh, Caleb Dick and Keon Young, who, as we said, has a shoulder separation. Keon, uh, maybe we can rest him. As we saw, Philip Thomas has come in and spelled him a few times during the year and uh, did a good job of running the ball late in the Northview game last week uh, against a defense that, uh, as you saw last night, against Opelika. And as we said last week, uh, that's not number, is that, that's number 47. That's Jarrell Thomas as he's uh, being helped off of the field. We hope it's nothing bad, but it appears to be that it's in the knee area the way he's got his uh, pants pulled up on that left knee or a possible ankle. So here we go uh, with 3.10 to go in the first quarter. Dothan Tigers lead 7-0. Tigers have the ball first and 10 from their own 18-yard line. Game being slowed down just a little bit while the Southern Bone and Joint crew gets uh, Thomas off the field. Now the official holds. Adams under center for the Tigers, first and 10. Keeps the ball himself, and he is going nowhere. Entrell tried to keep the ball around the left side on the option. He's brought down by number nine, Dean. Number 26 is Garrett Fuller for Smith Station. Bring up second and 10 for the Dothan Tiger offense. Defense came up big again for us there, Ron, uh, with the Panthers moving the ball down with good in interception by Fred Foster. And that's going to bring us to the end of the first quarter. So as we take a timeout here with the score, Dothan Tigers 7, Smith Station Panthers 0. Dothan Tigers first and 10 from their own 18-yard line. Adams hands the ball off to, uh, looks like Caleb Dick. It gets a big run. There's no flags on the play, so it's going to be a big first down run for the Dothan Tigers. Uh, Caleb Dick picks up about, what did he get, about 40 yards off of that run there, wasn't it? Were it not for the uh, Cordero Lockhart having the angle on him and running him down, Dothan Hyde be up on the uh, board again with another big play. Well, Caleb showed a good run of speed there. Good job. First and 10 Tigers from the Panther 40. Adams hands the ball off to Keon Young, who has stopped in the backfield for a loss of about a yard and a half. Bring up second down and 10 and a half. And boy, I tell you, that's a scary, uh, scary sight there with Keon having that uh, separated right shoulder the way they tackled him there. And I see he's holding a little bit gingerly there also. Number 71, Marion Jones. Uh, fighting off his block and was able to reach around and grab Keon by the shoulder and then uh, got some help and, and double Keon over there. Second 11 for the Tigers, Adams under center. Fakes the handoff in the backfield. Oh, throws the ball out the left side to Caleb Dick. Pass was incomplete. And here we go again, Ron. It's gonna be a third and long again for the Tigers as we've talked about all year. But they've come through in key situations and we need another big first down conversion here of uh, 11 yards at least. Third and long is where Key, um, Entrell usually drops back. He either picks a receiver and, and, and makes a good pass or uh, finds a crease in the defense and breaks off the run. And I'm gonna look right here, I'm gonna call it just for kicks and say Entrell's gonna uh, scamper around and find some room and uh, I'm wrong. 
Well, he did a good job, and he had an open Landry Bodie. Ball was uh, in Landry's hands as he was hit by the defender and uh, jar jarred the ball loose. Uh, great play there by Entrell. He stayed in the pocket. That was uh, really the first time I've seen the pressure get on him all year to where he actually stayed in his pocket. I thought for a second there that I was going to be uh, going to be be right. And uh, we were going to see him take it and run, but he did fire a strike to Landry. And if uh, if it weren't for the hit of number 21, Jimmy Freeman, Landry probably could have come down with that ball. Josh Lashley back to punt for the Tigers. He'll punt from his own 41-yard line. Angling for the corner. A big high punt. Good field coverage by the Tigers, who downs the ball at about the nine-yard line. So the Panthers will take over first and ten from their own nine-yard line with a lot of green to go with a tough Tiger defense in front of them. A good job by Lashley, as we've seen him do all year. Lashley can boom one, uh, but whenever he does need to put one inside the ten-yard line. And there you have Maurice Adams, number 23, who we've talked about for the last few weeks. So with some big special teams plays. Uh, gets down the field and he actually feels the punt in the air. Uh, could have called for a fair catch. Well, it saved the ball from possibly bouncing into the end zone for a touchback. So first and 10 from the nine yard line. Stringer's gonna give to number six, Lorenzo Hart. He's not gonna go anywhere. The first hit was made by number five, Jeremy Dan, and then Paul Reeves came up and finished him and pushed him into the backfield. Uh, looks like they're going to give him a yard off of it, Ron. That was a generous spot. As it didn't look like he looked like he might have lost yardage, but they give him a, give him a yard. So it's going to be second and nine from their own 10-yard line. Stringer setting the offense. He drops back. Throws a slant to number three, Brenton Averett. Ball's complete. The stop was made by number 11, John Hughes. Oh, I'm sorry, he says Landry Bodie. Okay, we're gonna go with him because he, like I said, he's got two spotters. Still brings up a big, long third down and a good yard and a half, a yard and two footballs. Yard and two footballs, a hot dog and a, a slice of pizza. Don't talk about that, I'm hungry. Looked like the give was to Dean. I didn't. Yeah, it's going to be close on the spot, too. Let's see what. Oh, the white cap is giving first down again. Boy, he is generous tonight. Dean, their big bruising uh, power back. Listed as a senior linebacker, but he's uh, seen him in the films and, uh, and tonight in the backfield. First and 10, Smith Station from their own 20 yard line. To give us to Dean again. And he goes nowhere. The a ball is scramble. stripped away. The ball was stripped away, and that is. Uh, Dothan, uh, Paul Reeves recovered the ball as he stripped it out of the uh, back's hands, and they give him the turnover, and he was fixing to run into the end zone, but they ruled his knee was down. So the Tigers take over first and 10 from the. Panther 21 yard line. I paused for a second. I couldn't find the ball and then I saw Paul Reeves come up with it uh, running towards the end zone. Jeremy Dent trying to help him along. I didn't know what had happened. I was scared there might have been a fire because I saw everybody going and <laughs> then like you said, I saw the ball. First and 10 for the Tigers. Adams under center from the 21 yard line of the Panthers leading seven nothing. Hands the ball off to somebody. Up the middle for a gain of about three. Terrell Brooks was the ball carrier. Gain of, gain of three, as we said, second down and seven. I wasn't able to tell who got the ball then. Uh, Adams did a good job uh, hiding the, uh, the give. Number 71, Marion Jones in on the stop, and Adams did do a good job of, uh, of carrying out the fake as, uh, as quarterbacks are taught to do, and Adams uh, Pitch out to number seven, Keon Young, around the right end. Picks up maybe a yard and a half, maybe two yards. Bring up the third down and about six yards, I would say. As I was saying, Adams playing his first year at quarterback, and he's come along and progressed week by week. And uh, uh, as he gets more repetitions, he's uh, done, done a better job. He looks, looks like a seasoned veteran back there tonight. Well, he is smooth with the way he runs the ball, runs the offense. Um, 
Adams brings him to the line from the shotgun. Double wides on both sides. Fakes the handoff to Young and comes around the outside. And uh, Ontario's got a little running room and into the end zone. Touchdown, Tigers. Ontario shut the tackle from number 27, Marlo Powell, and is able to uh, get into the end zone. So a big play by the Tiger defense as they got the turnover. And uh, Dothan offense is uh, complimenting the defense by putting it in the end zone and giving the Tigers a two touchdown lead here. Now we'll see what Drew Johnson can do for the point after attempt. Good snap. Kick is up and it's good. So with 7.34 to go before halftime, Tigers are up over the Smith Station Panthers by a score of 14 to zero. Go back to the run by Montreal Adams. When he came around the left side, coming towards us, Ron, it looked like they were going to stop him short of the first down, and somehow he just broke through the hole and then uh, kind of staggered, stumbled, and ran on into the end zone, but he did not uncover the football. They, uh, Smith Station had it strung out, and as, as we saw last week was the, the, the most uh, obvious time that Ontrell has shown his speed where he ran down the uh, Jeremy Thomas, the linebacker that got the interception. Uh, we saw him kick on a big burst of speed there at the end, and, and Ontrell looked like they had him strung out, and he got, whenever he saw the corner, he made a burst. His speed got him around the end, and uh, he was able to shuck the tackle and, and get into the end zone. Well, then we had some good blocking out here on the left side. I couldn't tell who exactly it was, but they were to hold, able to hold the defenders off of Adams long enough for him to kind of scoot through that little, maybe a yard and a half hole that he had between the two defenders where they were blocking him. And then he just kind of squirted through there, kind of like a persimmon seed and right on in the end zone, stumbling he went. All right, a persimmon seed. Well, it's better than a watermelon seed. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen a persimmon seed. Sounded good anyway. Yeah, it did. You don't have to question that. <laughs> Drew Johnson teased the ball up. Kick for Dothan. Kind of a low, hard to feel ball. Taken by number four, Cox. He's going to go around the left side. He got a little running room. Dances around. He breaks the tackle by number 23, Adams, there. And on the Comes back across the field and Drew Johnston is able to change his direction. A big return by Cox as he Drew. broke a tackle of Maurice Adams over about the 25 yard line. And Drew Johnson turning back in, but we don't have a number on number 26 who actually made the tackle and put him down at the 49 yard, or the, excuse me, the 44 yard line of the Tigers. This is only the second time that the Panthers have been in Tiger territory. And with that run, you can see there a little momentum, a little head pick up there from the Panther uh, sidelines. The return by Cox providing a little spark for the Panthers. Let's see what uh, Stringer can do with the offense. First and 10 on the Dothan High 45 yard line. The give was to number 24, Farrow. There was another saving tackle by uh, Reeves as he came up big to stop him because he was he was headed to the south end zone with a head of steam, but he was able to stop him in just short. No, they're going, they're giving him the first down. Boy, I tell you, Mr. Whitehead, he's he's all over tonight. He must have a date. Farrow picks up the the necessary yards for the first down to move the chains. See, just inside the 35 yard line of Dothan High School. Officials doing a good job having a generous ball game tonight. We like to see that. Both sides of the field. There's a fumble snap. Looked like Stringer was able to pick it up and fall forward. He even picked up a yard. Looked like he was fixing to uh, give the handoff there on the little end around uh, play that they've been running all night. And he just uh, had a miscue there from the center and uh, dropped the ball down. Brings up a second nine for the Panthers. Stringer in the shotgun. There's a shuttle pass to number two, Jared Ashford. 
Good start by number two, Chris Lester, uh, the quarterback from last year, uh, seeing a little defensive time here for the Tigers. Did a good job on that stop. Pickup of about three. Going to bring up a third and six from the Tiger 30-yard line. A good play call there by the Panther coaching staff. Uh, what do they call that? A little Utah shovel pass, I believe, and uh, a great job. Panthers really mixing the plays up here. Stringer back in the gun. He's going to drop straight back to pass. He's going to get pressure. The ball's batted up by Derek Creekmore and picked off by John Hughes, who's going to cut back across the field. Well, he's got the speed for coming a behind him. Good, good job block there. Touchdown, Tigers. They threw the flag on the block by Paul Reeves. I cannot believe that. That, that, block, that block there now, I'm going to have to say, on the officials making that call, um, you know, we don't disagree with the officials much, but the head was in front of him. That was a clean block. Cox tried to turn his back as he saw the hit from Reeves coming. And Boy, the, the fans do not like Vegas. that at all. And that is going to be the call. It's going to be a personal foul. Oh, the touchdown, touchdown stands. They're going to give foul. him the touchdown, and then they're going to call a personal foul. Now, uh, that's going to be confusing for everybody because uh, the block actually occurred prior to the touchdown. It was on the run. You know, we weren't looking, Jeff, but the block, it was a good block. Everybody was upset, thought it was a clip. And what happened was after the block, I believe Cox may have retaliated in anger against Paul Reeves and the official saw it. The, the flag was thrown on the spot of the block. So and they're kind of doing an offsetting penalty type deal. Uh, I just talked to one of the coaching staff members for the Panthers, and they did say that, yes, he did get his head behind as they showed it on the replay here. Uh, the coaching staff, good uh, thanks to them. They're standing right here to my left. Uh, where we're running the cameras, and they've got one going also. On their playback, they did say that uh, his head was behind him, so uh, a good call by the officials, but it didn't appear to be from up here. Well, I'll sit back and watch our film. Now they're marking the uh, penalty off against the Tigers, so they're going to make a little bit longer uh, point after for Drew Johnson, uh, so it was not offsetting penalties. Now we got a little confusion on the officials' part there because I believe the Panther coach is wanting to discuss that one with uh, the touchdown being given to the Tigers, uh, as we was talking about a while ago. Uh, a lot of confusion there, Jeff. Is uh, I am I'm myself. I'm confused now. Uh, just about as much confusion as trying to break a three-way tie in the event of a Dothan High win tonight and an Enterprise win. Uh, we'll let them sort it out, and whatever they whatever they come up with, we'll go by. But uh, nobody in the Dothan High stands thought that that was a clip. I didn't think it was a clip. Uh, I, I didn't think it was a clip either, but like I said, I've got the luxury of having the coaching staff for the Panthers here with two cameras, and, and they showed it on a, on a replay, and they, they're saying that it, that it was a clip but I, or a block. By, his head was behind the left shoulder, which puts him into the clipping category. Okay, uh, so you saw you saw the replay, and I, I, I'll take that. I'm, <laughs> I didn't know you'd stuck your head around and saw the replay. So I believe they must have the Panther coach uh, uh, appeal to him, let him know the ruling. So Drew Johnston now will have to make a 35-yard extra point attempt instead of a 13-yard extra point attempt. Drew has the leg. There's a good snap. The kick is up, and it's good. So with 5.08 left to play in the, in the half, Dothan High is going to take a 21 to nothing lead. And Jeff, uh, at, at this point, uh, you, you, you're not going to go ahead, and, and Smith Station is certainly not going to concede the game, but uh, we hope Enterprise is doing their job in Phoenix City tonight. That's right. We uh, we hope they're doing the same over there. I tell you what, neither side coaching staff, uh, they, are, they still haven't given up on that call. They're both still kind of uh, squawking about it. 
and uh, are talking amongst themselves and trying to figure out, you know, what all happened. And, and they're trying to, I believe some of the players on both sides kind of getting upset about the call, but you know, it's over with, it's done. They made their call. Uh, the Tigers got out on the lucky end of the deal. They gave them the six points. We got the point after, you know, it's done. So now we'll move on to the uh, rest of the ball game here and forget that one, it's over with and done. Dothan High having an extended meeting with the kickoff team. As uh, the last kickoff we had, we saw Cox break one uh, for about 50 yards on us. I see Johnson teeing it up over on the far right side. Do you see Cox in the uh, uh, receiving team? I can't I believe now he was the one that got hurt, wasn't he? Wasn't he the one that took the shot? Wasn't that he Cox that went down? He was the one in the, that uh, Paul Reeves hit on the block that was uh, which brought about all the confusion. So well, nonetheless, we're back ready to play here. Uh, Tigers got the points on the board. Adam Nelson, number five, and uh, Lockhart, number one, back to receive. There's a high end over end kick that Nelson is going to watch bounce into the end zone. Well, then I tell you what, Ron, that's the best way that the Tigers can uh, keep from Cox or any of the speedy backs for the Panthers returning a kickoff by kicking in the end zone as we've seen Johnson do it and get it gone. I see a lot of the fans are looking up here asking if we got the Enterprise score yet. And, uh, at this point, we can't help anybody because we have nothing. First and 10 for Smith Station from their own 20 yard line. Some confusion as to the set of the offense. Stringer gets some sets, got Farrow in the backfield. There's Cox back in the game in motion and uh, gonna be a dead ball penalty here. I see the flag coming from the other side of the field over there and here whistles blow. Ron, I just got an update from Enterprise. Uh, the score right now, Enterprise 20, Central 7. Go Wildcats. For this, not for, for this week only. Exactly, and I'm not sure, uh, you know, what, how far along into that game are, but I'm sure they're about the same that we are. It may be a halftime score uh, as we've had some, you know, confusion and a few delays here, but nonetheless, we'll try to keep it going as we can. So... Smith Station is going to be backed up five yards on the penalty, a legal procedure. It's going to be first and 15. And there's another flinch there on the offensive line. That one was obvious. You can see that one from up here. Jason Austin coming out, I believe. Uh, Ron, I have to correct myself. 14 nothing central second quarter. So the information we had earlier was a little bit bad. That's okay by the time this tape's playing, it'll be through anyway. We'll all know the final score. So there's another jump by Central. It's gonna back them up five more yards, make it first and 20 from the 10 yard line. Now we got whistles blowing again everywhere. Let's see what they're. They've gotten it straight. The head official blows the ball back in play. So Had his own squad confused. First and 20 for Smith Station from their own 10 yard line. 4.51 to go in the half. 21 to nothing, Dothan. The give is to Dean around the right side or left side. Couldn't tell, but it looked like Brandon Williams was in on the stop. Lost a yard. Lost a yard. Going to bring up second and 21. We're going to give the stop to Brandon Williams because I believe it was number 52. I know that my, uh, our nice PA announcer up here didn't help us any on that. The ball was away from us, but Brandon Williams, good job. Second and 21 from the nine yard line. Stringer's gonna fake a handoff, drop back to pass. There's Cox. And he receives the ball, gonna pick up about seven yards. Stop was made by Jeremy Dent and uh, Fred Foster, I believe. 
Looks like Foster's kind of shaking around a little bit there. Uh, we don't need an injury to him. Look like maybe uh, shaking his shoulder, maybe just a little stinger. I tell you, I'm impressed with this Panther offense. Even though they have no score, uh, points on the board, they're doing a great job mixing up the plays. And their uh, pass coming out of the backfield there has really got the Tiger defense struggling a little bit as to which way to cover on that. Stringer back in shotgun formation, third and 14 from their own 16-yard line. He's alone in the backfield. He takes a snap, drops back to pass. He's pressured. He's going to get away, find uh, some running room, and uh, finally he's brought down short of the first down. A good job there on the stop by number 52. Brandon Williams, they're saying Entrell Adams, but it wasn't. It was Brandon Williams who made the stop for the Tigers and uh, put us back in a fourth and three situation. Stringer's going to drop back to punt. Stringer had a, a receiver open down the right side here. I don't know if he didn't see him or what happened, but he, he was, was open. He was pressured by Creekmore, it looked like, and uh, forced to dance around a little bit. There's a high punt that's going to be short and take a Smith Station roll. Hits about the 50 yard line and rolls down to the 39. So not an impressive kick as far as uh, the way that it looked, but uh, able to to get a good net there with the roll. 2.26 to go in the half. Tigers still lead the ball game, 21 0. Uh, Panthers have put together some good offensive drives and good impressive play by the quarterback and number four, Cox and uh, they just haven't been able to move the ball down without the one drive that the Tigers intercepted. And uh, it, it, without that, they're, they're scoreless right now. First and 10 for the Tigers from their own 39-yard line. Adams from the shotgun, double wides each side. Adams keeps the ball himself, and he picks up about maybe a yard and a half on the play. Tackle by number 26, Garrett Fuller. As Entrell is able to pick up about two yards. Garrett able to come up from his defensive back position and trip Entrell up. And as I always say, I like to see Adams when we start running the shotgun formation. Instead of being under center, he's got so much more visual uh, acuity out there. Adams second and eight. Shotgun again, double wides both sides. Takes the ball straight up the middle himself on a little quarterback keeper. It looks like he picks up about another six yards or maybe five. Bring up third down and about two and a half, maybe three yards for the Tigers. 26 Fuller did a good job. Probably one of the best jobs we've seen of an open field tackle on Entrell this year. So he's able to take Entrell's feet out from under him. Bring up a third and two for Dothan High. Adams from the shotgun again, double wides. Hand off to Keon Young over the right side, and Keon's going to have the first down and a little more to go along with it. Into Panther territory. Stopped by number three, Brenton Averett, and uh, finished off by number 25, Sean Allen. First and 10 for the Tigers from the Panther 47 yard line. Adams from the shotgun again. Takes the ball, looking to pass. Makes a long pass down the right side to Carlos Frazier. And it appeared as though he may have been tripped, but there's no flag. A uh, little, maybe uh, another one of those that they rule is an uncatchable ball. Jeff, I don't know if they ruled it uncatchable. It, it looked like there wasn't uh, an official in position to make the call. So I'm not a, I've never been a football official. I don't know how the rotation works in the, in the secondary. But uh, the back judge over here was over in the middle of the field, shaded to the other side, and uh, saw a side judge running down about 30 yards, 25 yards behind the play. Well, and that may have been one of those deals where the uh, back judge here, Mr. Dwayne Watkins, who does a good job calling, uh, was may have been caught off guard just a little bit and uh, 
maybe uh, he was enjoying watching a good football game on the Tiger side of it and just uh, kind of drugged just a little bit too much and wasn't able to get there. And then, like you said, the line judge had to go down, and, uh, you know, it's a little bit hard for him to make that call. As he, like you said, 20 or 25 yards behind the play, it's hard for him to uh, throw his hanky on the ground and, and, and give the call. This not being a, a city game, we don't cover Smith Station during the week. Uh, so if we sound a little biased, it's because we are. Adam from the shotgun again. He's holding on to the ball right now, running around. There we go again, looking for a receiver. He's got a man open, two men open down in the end zone. And that is going to be a touchdown to number three, Tyree Dury. Touchdown, Tigers. Entrail ran around in circles, as we, we've said a, a couple of weeks ago. Runs around in circles and is able to throw a beautiful spiraling pass. He had uh, number three, Dury, and number 84, Carlos Frazier, down in the end zone. And Carlos did a good job of sitting behind Tyree and watching Tyree catch the ball, making sure that the ball didn't bounce off Tyree's hands in, in, uh, in case he needed to, to try to catch a deflection. Well, and the Panthers showed a lot of respect there for Adam's speed and agility to run as they came up on him, and the defenders just left two receivers wide open about the three-yard line, and they just fell in. Point after attempt by Johnson is good. So with 42 seconds to go in the halftime, both the Tigers lead the Smith Station Panthers by a score of 28 to zero. Jeff, if you uh, keep referencing back to the Enterprise Central game, I hope that uh, that the Enterprise quarterback, Brooks, who we've seen uh, a lot like on trail, able to run the ball and throw the ball, hope he's getting everything untracked over there and uh, Enterprise is shaving that 14-point lead that Central has. Well, we had heard uh, today, I believe it was Coach Kelly was saying that yesterday that the... Uh, the uh, quarterback for Enterprise they thought had gotten hurt last night at a pep rally. I think they said he may have fallen out of a wheelbarrow. Now, we did not know if that was true or not, uh, but right now, uh, they was just uh, flashing it up here that uh, Enterprise has gotten on the board, and I believe the score was like 22 or 24 to 7 uh, Central, and that's, that's kind of where I'm showing. 24? But Enterprise did score. So that's good for the Wildcats. They just need to keep that going and uh, get some more points on the board. Go Enterprise. Johnston tees it up for Dothan High. 42 seconds left in the first half. He's on the right hash again, Jeff. As, uh, I see Cox is back deep over on the right side. And on the, this side, uh, we've got Cordero Lockhart. Johnson gets another high end over end kick that's going to go about four yards deep into the end zone. Those kicks right there make it hard to return because you can't. Another good job there by Drew Johnson getting the ball into the end zone. So the Panthers' uh, quick bat backs did not have the opportunity to break something loose here right before halftime. Dothan High's had the luxury this year, as we've covered these games, of, of having a a, a solid kicking game in their in their punter uh, Josh Lashley and and Drew Johnson who handles the kickoff and the place kicking duties. Okay, here we go again. Hanky's on the ground. Tiger's going to be penalized for an illegal substitution. So that's going to back them up five yards, give Smith Station five yards towards uh, towards the drive here. It's going to wind up, looks like, the first half. First Tigers and five. De Tigers defense may come up big with a turnover. First and five from the 25-yard line. There's a double reverse. Going to go to Lockhart around the left side. He's got running room. As uh, Paul Reeves just barely got a hand on him enough to knock him out of bounds. Paul Reeves grazes him, get him out of bounds about the 42-yard uh, line. 
there again we see the speed of the Panther uh, backs and wideouts as they come around on the reverses and the hands off. Uh, there, they've got a lot of speed, and as I said, Coach Kelly spoke about that very highly today. So first and ten from their own 47-yard line. The give is up the middle. I didn't see what number that was that got the ball. I thought it was Dean. That's number two, Jared Ashford. Good job by Jeremy Dent, Carlos Frazier, and then a whole host of Tigers come in to stop him uh, for a gain of about a yard and a half. Uh, Panthers gonna take a timeout here with 23 seconds to go before halftime, trailing 28 to nothing. And uh, you know, they've, they've had some impressive drives in spite of the score. The Dothan defense is just, once again, as we've spoken of all year, they have come up big again uh, for the Dothan High Tigers and either stop the drive or as we saw a while ago, the interception. And it's, uh, it, it's big defensive plays for the Tigers that have kept them in good ball games all year long. We've, uh, we've lived by the big plays and we've died by the big plays. But, uh, well, we've died by some of the small plays too with about three yards to go in uh, fumble, but those are gone. We just got to move forward. Second down and eight from their own 49 yard line. 23 seconds to go in the half. Stringer's gonna drop back to pass. He's gonna throw a ball that's tipped by Tyree Dury and it looked like it may have been tipped by another Dothan Tiger. Is that uh, Creekmore over there? I couldn't tell if Creekmore tipped the ball or not, but uh, number 14, who's not listed in the program for Smith Station, able to, to haul it in off the deflection. I think it was tipped by Foster also and the stop was made by Creekmore. I saw him over in the area. Stringer back to pass again. Uh, Good job there by Landry Bodie getting in front of the defender. Pass intended for number three, Brandon Avery, as uh, Bodie's able to dive in and get a hand on the ball. Got a holding against the Panthers here with three seconds before halftime. That's in the holding zone. White hadn't showed holding while ago. Did he? And they are going to mark him back uh, 10 more yards. Holding the ball against the Panthers. That must have been a spot of the foul. So it's going to bring up a long conversion here for the Panthers to get the ball back down with three seconds going. And uh, you wonder if they're going to drop to a knee or are we going to see Stringer air one out? Going to be first down, two Chevrolets and a Cadillac. That was pretty good. <laughs> you hesitated on me. I was wondering if you were ignoring me. I was trying to figure out the distance of that. Stringer back to pass as the horn blows. He's got number four Cox out there, and the Cox was uh, caught up looking at the ball instead of uh, continuing his route. Well, and he makes a little fake back to the middle, and it kind of uh, stopped Tyree Dury on his pursuit, and he was able to uh, get it by. Uh, but nonetheless, they did not score. So at halftime from Ripview Stadium, Dothan Tigers lead the Smith Station Panthers by a score of 28-0. We'll be back. Tigers come back onto the field following a fine halftime performance by both the Smith Station and Dothan High Bands. And I want to take a, just a minute to uh, to commend the Dothan High Band and the, and the show that they do. And that the I believe we've said it once before, but that Lee Greenwood song, uh, God Bless the USA, there where they uh, put up the flag at the end of the song, it, it still gives me chill bumps every week. Oh, yeah, it does. And uh, like you said, a great performance by both bands. I like my man up here that does the announcing for him when he hits that greatest band in Tigerland. Hey, uh, one, of the, one of the fixtures that you've come to, to look for at a Dothan High ball game. I see Carlos Frazier going out to represent his squad. And uh, Dean coming across for the Panthers, number nine. 
Tigers deferred the kickoff to the second half, so they will receive the ball and uh, start with the offense on the field for the start of the second half. As we said, score coming in here to the third quarter. Dothan Tigers up over the Smith Station Panthers by a score of 28-0. Uh, I believe we had a halftime score a while ago, the uh, Enterprise uh, ball game, Enterprise Central. Central was leading that ball game 20-7 is what I understand at halftime. Uh, so come on, Wildcats, let's go. Let's get it in gear over there and uh, get Central back on the, on the road and pull out a big win to help out the Dothan High Tigers. Remember, we're your friends over here. Y'all beat us with a controversial call in the end zone, so come on now, help us out. <laughs> That's right. As a, not only being a, being a homer, but uh, uh, like to see Dothan High able to continue their season as they've played awfully hard this year. The coach has done an outstanding job of putting them in a position to win every ball game. And, uh, We've just gotten some some bad breaks. Some some of those breaks we made ourselves, but uh, uh, the four and four record that we carry into the night's ball games is not representative of the of the kind of the caliber of football that they played this year. Panthers kick the ball off to start the third quarter here to the Tigers. A short kick. Whistles are being blown everywhere, so I guess we had maybe a fair catch signal by Keon. I couldn't tell, but I noticed the judge back here, he went to blowing his whistle first, so he got good eyesight. Well, it looked like Carlos Frazier was set to catch the ball. Keon coming from the, the deep back position, running up under it. I don't know if maybe one of them waved a fair catch sign and the other one caught it. or. Nonetheless, Tigers will take over first and 10 from their own 30-yard line. Adams from the shotgun formation again. Double, double wide outs either side. Third quarter just underway. Adams hands the ball to Keon Young over the right side, and he's going to be stopped in the backfield uh, short of the original line of scrimmage. Uh, well, no, we got another generous spot. Looks like they're going to put him back at the original line of scrimmage. Bring up second and 10 for the Tigers from their own 30-yard line. Stopped by number 26, Fuller, who we saw uh, in the first half. Had several stops uh, from his linebacker spot. Adams from the shotgun again for the Tigers. Hand off to Keon Young again, and he will be dropped for a loss this time, about a, a yard and a half loss. Uh, Ron, if you notice, uh, the Tigers, they're coming out in the same formation now on offense, and they're starting to run various plays out of the same setup. Keon, that play looked like he uh, might have tripped over a blade of grass. I saw Dean falling on top of him, but he's going to lose about two yards and uh, bring up a third and long for Dothan High. Adams from the shotgun again, double wide outs either side. Adams looking to pass, heavy rush coming from one. Adams tucks the ball, runs forward, breaks one tackle, breaks another one. He's going to be down short of the first down by about four yards, maybe three yards. So it'll bring up fourth and three for the Tigers from their own 42-yard line. On trail, found a little running room, able to pick up uh, eight yards on the play. Ran into Brandon Williams down the field, slowed him down just a little bit. Uh, like to see Brandon finding somebody to block instead of standing around watching. Lashley back to punt for the Tigers on the fourth and three. A low snap, he does get the ball away. A good spiral punt, filled at about the 28-yard line by number four, Cox, and it looks like Reeves has, yes, Reeves is going to stop him uh, back at about the 21-yard line of the Panthers, but we do have a flag on the play again back here in the backfield around uh, possibility of maybe uh, roughing the uh, kicker maybe, which would be a personal foul if it is. Yes, it is. That'll pick up the first down for the Tigers. Ron, I was looking just a minute ago. I saw a Tiger walking on the sideline. I'm not for sure who it is, but we've got a splint on the left knee, a knee brace on the left knee, that is, and I can't make out who it is. Uh, Jarrell Thomas, number 47, is who we think it may be because of the hit that he took earlier in the game. Jarrell came off of the field with the aid of the Southern Bone and, Bone and Joint crew. Southern Bone and Joint, joint. I don't know. Southern tongue, Bone tongue. and Joint. Southern Bone and Joint. 
you got to use that southern draw on that to get it out there, Ron. And I know you got it because you from Cottonwood. That is right. But uh, Jarrell, the only injury that I remember, the only leg injury that I remember from the first half. So the roughing, the personal foul roughing the punter against the Panthers will result in a first down for the Tigers from their own 42-yard line. So the Tigers have a little new life. Adams brings the Tigers up to the line, under center, long setback, Keon Young. Fakes the handoff to Young and keeps the ball himself and turns back up the middle, uh, maybe gain of about one. Looked like he was, uh, maybe had an idea of pitching the ball to Bodie as he was coming around from the left side. He did, he saw a crease off the right tackle there. He's brought down by number nine, Dean. But uh, was able to pick up a yard maybe a yard and a half going to bring up a second and long for Dothan High from their own 43 yard line 917 to go in the third quarter Adams under center Young the long setback Adams drops back to pass and he's got Fred Foster there and Fred Foster incomplete pass as Fred dropped the ball it looked like he had it there for a minute Ron I thought he made the grab I couldn't tell as it was on the far side. But uh, the ball falls incomplete and it brings up a third and nine for Dothan High. Here we are again, that long third down situation again for the Dothan High Tigers. We but, called them cardiac kids up until last week and this week. Now let's don't get in that position. What do you think? Uh, yeah, that's a, sounds good to me. We don't. Uh, we need to work on what we're going to need for the playoffs because I feel like Enterprise is going to come back over at Phoenix City. Pass across the middle, number three, Tyree Dury, as he turns in, goes down the right side, got some green there, and he's got one guy that does stop him. Uh, look like Lockhart come across to make the stop as Tyree Dury makes a, a good run on a little uh, little outside in route there as he came across the middle and broke into the secondary of the Panthers and then. Adams made a great play, a great pass to him, and then he turned on the cold down the other side. A good block by Fred Foster, as we saw on the far side, and a good run. Smith Station got a player down over on the far side. I can't see that far, tell who it is. Uh, on the play there by Dury, you saw Carlos Frazier down the field blocking, and, and he had a chance to make a block on Lockhart right before Lockhart caught him, but the block was going to be questionable as it didn't look like Carlos could get around in the front side, and Carlos did a good job showing his discipline and, uh, and just had to watch Lockhart uh, make a touchdown saving tackle. Well, then Fred Foster had the same situation over there when Dury cut across, and he just kind of bumped him. He did not really put a block on him, but it was enough to slow the defender down to let Dury get to the far right side of the field. First down in Tigers from the eight-yard line with the Panthers. Adams under center. Tigers leading 28-0, third quarter. Handoff goes to Keon Young over the left side, and he's going to get the ball into the end zone for another touchdown, Tigers. Excellent second effort by Keon Young as he was hit about the uh, three-yard line. Trying to break the tackle and saw the goal line and uh, stretched the ball out, broke the plane, and uh, was able to get in for a touchdown. Number 37, Drew Johnson, in the kick the one after attempt for the Tigers, and i uh, like to see that. He's getting some kicking time tonight, Ron. He may have to rub his leg down. Kick is up, and it is good. So with 8.31 to go in the third quarter, the Tigers go up by a score of 35-0 over a good offensively uh, team off Smith Station Panthers, but the Dothan Tiger defense has just proven to be too much for them so far in this ballgame. They have the big plays, as, uh, as we've seen by the Tiger offense and by the Tiger defense, proving to be too much in the first uh, – Two quarters and a half for Smith Station. There's a Smith Station team that uh, that beat Auburn, as we mentioned earlier, two weeks ago. They uh, up until the Enterprise game last week, where they were beaten, had a two-game winning streak with a win over Northview, who beat Opelika last night, and uh, win over Auburn, the only region loss that Auburn's got for the year. Well, and as we said earlier, 
Uh, there's a lot riding on this ball game for the Dothan Tigers. They must win here against uh, the Panthers. And also uh, our 34 mile counterparts over here, the Enterprise Wildcats, they need to strike up a comeback against uh, Central and pull off a big win there for the Tigers to have the chance to go to the uh, postseason play, uh, which we do know we'll have to travel. Uh, next Friday night, we're in Birmingham with Spain Park, uh, which we will not be there for the uh, taping of that show. But nonetheless, you can listen to it on the radio station. Or it'd be better if you had show up and go. Johnston set to kick it off. He gets a uh, high, deep end over end kick that uh, Lockhart's going to take about the one yard line. His momentum carried him into the end zone. That will be a touchback. What was that three, three touchbacks? Three touchbacks out of six kicks for Drew tonight. Well, ever since Cop ran in with the uh, that long run off of the kickoff, if you've noticed, the uh, uh, Tigers kicking squad has come in and they put Johnson in the position to where, I'm sorry, Lashley, uh, no. It's Johnson. Johnson, I'm right. Uh, put him in the position to where he's not going to give up, hopefully another one of those long runs, and just kick it into the end zone. Smith Station with the ball, 831 to go in the third quarter, down 35 to nothing on their own 20-yard line. The fake is the Pharaoh. Stringer keeps it around the right side. Stop made by number five, Jeremy Dent, and 51, Derek Creekmore, after a gain of three on the play. Derek Creekmore, name that we've mentioned a few times tonight, not as much as we have in the, in the previous games, but uh, Derek, another senior, outstanding performer for the Dothan Tigers. Plays both ways, offense and defense. Snaps the punts and extra points. Second and seven. Stringer back to pass, and the ball is going to be knocked down at the line by Kevin Teague, number 90. A great job there by uh, getting over to block the ball. Of course, if you notice there, Dothan saw that coming, and I saw Creekmore kind of creep back as he gave him the look of a blitz coming in uh, to give Stringer the option to throw it. He tried to throw over to the right side of the field and Creekmore had backed up. So if the ball's not tipped, got a good chance there for a pick as Creekmore was in perfect position. Third and seven from the 23 yard line. There's a double reverse to Lockhart again. He's around the left side. He's got running room and Tyree Dury comes up to make a stop. Depends on the mark there. Looks like got a little extracurricular going on over here and number four Cox involved again with number 78 from Dothan High, Fred Glenn. And I believe they picked up the first down on the run, but we do have uh, hankies on the ground again. Dothan's gonna be called for a personal foul. Uh, and it's got, uh, as we said, it's got to go against Glenn. So not only was he uh, uh, penalized by the PA announcer there, but he was also ejected. You don't see that very much in high school football these days, but uh, they're saying Fred Glenn had, you know, was removed from the game after the uh, unsportsmanlike conduct, and that is a 15-yard penalty as they're marking it off here. So it's going to give a big gain there to the Panthers who had just picked up the first down just by a little bit and a good defensive stand by the Tigers again. And uh, something that you hate to see, and I see Coach Kelly and Coach Fleming talking with Fred about the uh, – about what happened. So it's going to bring up a first down for Smith Station after the penalty at their own 46 yard line. And I wasn't able to see what happened on that play, Ron. Uh, you know, we was watching the ball go to the far side of the field, and then all of a sudden I saw the Hankies coming in, and I saw Cox and Glenn down there with the uh, discussion going on amongst themselves. Uh, you know, and that's one of those things. Hey, it might have been a private conversation. The officials didn't need to get up there and get into it and start throwing their hankies around. Let them play football a little bit. But then again, we don't know what what instigated the whole scenario. <laughs> First and 10 Smith Station from their own 46-yard line. <coughs> 
Stringer brings him to the line. He's got a double wing. There's Lockhart in motion. He gets the ball around the right side. He's got running room. I see a flag down. It looks like we might have a... A good job by Landry Bodie and uh, Paul Reeves as they stopped him, but it looks like we're going to have possibly a clip back here uh, or maybe uh, a holding call. And it is going to be a holding call against the Panthers, so it'll negate another good run by the Panthers. Lockhart getting the ball on, the, on that quick reverse with his speed able to uh, to elude the Tiger defense, pick up the yards, but uh, like you said, it's going to be all for naught as there will be a 10-yard penalty and back Smith Station up to the 36-yard line where they'll put the ball in play from there first and 20. Enterprise score still 20 to 7 in the third quarter, Central leading them. Stringer in the shotgun. Back to pass, he's gonna throw it out to Cox over on the left side. Dothan High doing a good job of hemming him up over there. Gain of five on the play, a good stop by John Hughes, Paul Reeves, Derek Creekmore. Uh, good, uh, good pursuit there by the Tigers to get over and get him because uh, as quick as he is, any little break in daylight he can see, you better look out because it's off to the races. Brings up a second and 15. Stringer stays in the gun. Back to pass. He's going to get pressure from Brandon Williams and Jason Austin. He's going to get the pass away just before Austin hits him. Good pursuit by the Tiger uh, defensive line there. Uh, to make Stringer come out of the pocket and uh, good coverage by the Dothan High secondary not to allow him to have an open man and he really just had to force that ball and he was trying to use the uh, receiver's height and uh, I don't know if that was Lockhart across the middle uh, evidently has got some good jumping abilities I'm not sure who it was but they were just trying to make something happen third and 15 I see a blitz coming from John Hughes over there. Stringer able to get the pass off to Cox over on the left side. And the pursuit of the Dothan defense is gonna knock him out of bounds about the 50 yard line. The stop was made by Paul Reeves and Jason Austin on the far side uh, and a good stop there to, to disallow the first down play on the third down attempt. They did uh, get the ball back inside of the original 10 yard scrimmage line and it'll bring up a fourth down and six for the Panthers. Uh, ball just almost on the mid-stripe line. It looks like the offense is going to stay on the field as down 35 points with 5.43 to go in the third quarter. Nothing to lose here. As they try to draw Dothan off sides, and they do as John Hughes looked like he was blitzing. He's talking to the officials about the about where the neutral zone is, but they uh, did throw the flag. Still not going to be enough for the first down. There'll still be a uh, yard and a half shot. A good hard count there by Stringer in the quarterback position to uh, draw the Tigers off. As I, I believe, actually, they probably were trying to uh, maybe fake the blitz, but nonetheless, he, he encroached across the, the line and cost the Tigers five yards. Leaves the fourth in about a one and a half. Stringer under center got Dean in the backfield. He hands off to Lockhart around the right side and he's not gonna go anywhere as he slipped and Derek Creekmore's uh, there to, to make sure that he goes down. So a big stop by the Dothan defense to, uh, to stall the drive of Smith Station. Well, and Ron, you see a little frustration over there on the Panther side now, offensively and defensively, as they're not able to, they can't control the offense of the Tigers, and the defense is controlling the Panther offense, and uh, the, the players are getting a little, a little frustrated. First and 10 for the Tigers from their own 48-yard line. Adams comes up under center. 
correct that. Chris Lester comes up under center for the Tigers. Drops back to pass. Now he hands the ball off. Number 32, Kenny Reese, who goes over the right side with a gain of about two. Some clean jerseys in the ball game for Dothan High School. You can see uh, Lester there quarterbacking. I see uh, Michael D's in at, uh, at tight end. We have a 440 to go in the third quarter and a, a large lead, 35 to nothing by the Tigers. It's a good time for Coach Kelly and his staff to push some legs in. Lester brings them up again. Runs option, turns the ball in, and he slips and falls. So evidently, the dew is settling on the field a little bit as uh, he falls down and maybe gain of about one. It's like a flag on the play back in the secondary. See number 27, Marlo Blocked Powell. below for, the legs, uh, below the knees against the Tigers. Number 27, Marlo Powell. Back in the secondary, gets up limping, so I uh, don't know who it was, but somebody got him below the waist, downfield, out, out of the zone that where they are protected uh, from blocking below the waist. Going to be a 15-yard penalty against Dothan High. Bring up a second down and 20. I'm going to tell you, we got some hankies flying tonight, don't we? I think the wind's knocking them out of their pocket. Lester brings the Tigers up under center. Second and many. Oh, and a little mix up there in the backfield as they go down. And uh, there you can kind of see a little temper flaring on the uh, Panther sideline as they're getting a little disgusted and a little extracurricular hitting going on. But nonetheless, no uh, flags down. Got an updated score on the Enterprise uh, ball game. It's 20 to 14. Enterprise has just scored. Uh, still in the third quarter. So keep driving, Wildcats. Let's go. I see Dothan High is uh, taking Keon Young after a, a productive game from Keon, the sophomore tailback or running back. Dothan High has. He's got an ice pack on his shoulder. Lester, third and 20, hands the ball off. Phillip Thomas, number 14, gets the ball down into Panther territory at about the 46-yard line. A uh, good gain on the play. It's going to bring up uh, fourth down and long for the Tigers, about fourth and maybe four. And there you saw number 14, Phillip Thomas, who we talked about last week coming in late in the Northview game and having some, some good runs. Uh, in the event that we weren't going to have Keon tonight, we talked about Phillip being uh, being able to step in, and looks like we're going to see the second uh, second string punter here. I'm not for sure who that is. I can't tell the number. I thought it was a 38, but uh, maybe a 28. Got flags on the play. It is. It's number 28, Caleb Dick. Showing a little versatility there, Ryan, on the uh, uh, Tiger side with Caleb Dick, who's been running the ball. I'm sorry, hold on, we'll figure it out here in just a second. 26, who we uh, saw earlier in on a, a special teams play that uh, we don't have his name listed in the program. We apologize for the confusion, but the Tigers are throwing some wrinkles in on us, and uh, we'll get them straight. Well, this happens fresh faces at a, in, a, in a game to where you get the lead like this and a home game, we're able to dress out some of the ninth graders. Whoever it is got off a good punt that uh, rolled down to the five yard line. Dothan was able to down it just inside the five yard line. No return. A good rush by the Pan uh, Panther front line and they almost got back there and blocked the ball. But as you said, he uh, rushed it, got the punt out. And uh, the Tigers uh, down the ball down at the five yard line of the Panthers where they've got a long way to go and a lot of green to go. With 2-11 remaining in the third quarter, behind 35 nothing. Tigers playing a great ball game on both sides of the ball tonight. Stringer's going to bring them up. First and 10. Ball just inside the five-yard line. 
He's going to hand off on that quick reverse to uh, looks like Cox around the left side. Stop was made by number 51, Derek Creekmore, with a gain of about one on the play. Looks like Cox is maybe favoring a favoring an arm or a shoulder. He appeared to do that earlier in the ball game. It looked like he was uh, maybe off of the uh, block. It would go back to you where he was kind of crippled up just a little bit. And we do see him, like you said, favoring it a little bit. Second and nine. Stringer hands off to number 26. That's Garrett Fuller off the left side. He's going to pick up about two yards. And they're saying the stop was made by Jeremy Dent, but I believe the stop was actually made by number 11, John Hughes, as he came across and got in and wrapped him up. Going to bring up a third and seven for Smith Station. Fifty-five seconds left in the third quarter. Both in high up, thirty-five to zero. Looks like a little confusion in the backfield, and uh, Stringer's going to have to take a timeout as he was close to getting a delay of the game penalty. Well, and a good job there by the Tiger defense, as they did not go ahead and get set and give Stringer the option of seeing it too early and making his play and then when the Tigers did not do what he thought they were going to do he went to trying to move his uh, receivers around just a little bit uh, because it is a third down and long and uh, the Tigers kind of got him confused and he wasn't uh, wasn't able to really get himself in a position and like you said he had to waste the time out because he couldn't get his receivers set. Wayne White out coaching the defense during the timeout. And still, uh, still teaching. Got to be very happy with his Tiger defense uh, on their performance throughout this uh, 05 year, 04 year, excuse me. Stringer back to pass. And uh, he was pressured hard by Kevin Tigg and Carlos Frazier. And just throws the ball away. It looked like the receiver didn't even wasn't even looking. Fred Foster was looking though, but it was just a little too far for him. But he saw a ball touchdown, ball touchdown, and just couldn't get it. But if he could have, look out because that would have been several more points for the Tigers. Stringer's going to drop back in the in punt formation. He's going to be about uh, five yards deep in the end zone. Number three, Tyree Dury back deep to receive for Dothan High. Should get good field position. They're set up the return. There's a high spiraling kick that's going to bounce about the 36-yard line and roll dead about the 44. So Dothan High will have it. 24 seconds left in the third quarter. And uh, we'll see what Chris Lester and this young offense can do here. I want to tell you, that was a good uh, punt there by the Panthers punter as he, the ball was snapped very low. He picked it up. Of course, there wasn't a big rush from the Tiger defense as they were expecting to get good field position outside, out of it. So they just uh, let him receive the ball, pick it up off the ground and run it. Tigers take over first and 10 from the 44 of the Panthers. Chris Lester under center. Goes to number 32, Kenny Reese. Uh, looks like he got no gain on the play. <laughs> Tigers kind of doing a good thing here to where they can get some of the young guys in, get them some experience here. Uh, it's going to be needed next year, and it's a great way to start it. So at the end of the third quarter, the score remains Dothan Tigers 35, Smith, Th Smith Station Panthers 0. We'll be back. Back in action, fourth quarter underway. Tigers first and 10 for the Panther 44, Lester under center. Hands 
ball off again to Kenny Reese over the left side and gains about four yards on the play. Brings up a second down and six. Brought down by number 21, Jimmy Freeman. Ron, we got two young ladies right here that we're going to let them step up here and say go Tigers. Miss Sarah Ellen Nelson and uh, my dog, Kylie Speed. Go Tigers! Go Tigers! Thank you. They've been about to bust to do that, so we had to let them do it. Third down and six for the Tigers from the 40-yard line of the Panthers. Lester under center. Hands the ball off to Philip Thomas over the right side. Fights hard for a couple of yards. Uh, looks like he's going to be close to a first down. Let's see what the spot is again. They've been generous all night. And White hit the signal first down again, so uh, we like to see that. Don't bring the change across. Let Ricky Dixon and the guys over there relax. So the second team offense doing a good job of moving the ball here for Dothan High. They hadn't gotten to see a lot of action this week. Or not this week, but this year. Lester under center. Hands the ball off right up, straight up through the middle. Makes the run by Kenny Reese. A gain of about six on the play. Great job by the, these guys coming in and moving the ball down the field on a, a Panther defense that's uh, uh, played well uh, the whole ball game. Just had a few big plays that the Tigers have come up with. Reese picked up five yards on the play and uh, looked like he was surprised that he had as much run room as he did as uh, from the time that he broke the line of scrimmage. He looked like he was expecting to get hit just any second. Second five for the Tigers. Lester under center. Hands the ball off to Kenny Reese over the left side and he goes uh, maybe a yard gain, maybe two on the play for the Tigers. But uh, yeah, like you said, I think he was surprised that uh, somebody didn't light him up when he went through the line and kind of caught him off guard. Brings up a third and about three for Dothan High. From the Panther 26 yard line. Lester under center, Thomas and Reese in the backfield. Handoff goes to Thomas over the left side. Got a little running room. He's gonna pick up the first down, but he's gonna be pushed out of bounds at about the nine, the 14 yard line of the Panthers. Maybe the 16 yard line, now they're moving it back. Good job by Thomas as he uh, had the speed to get to the corner. And uh, whenever he did, uh, he saw that he was running out of real estate over there. Lowered his head and, and turned it up and knifed his way up for the first down for Dothan High. First and 10 for the Tigers from the 16 yard line of the Panthers, leading the ball game 35 to zero. Lester under center, hands the ball off this time over the right side. Kind of brought down there with a hard run. Uh, that was Thomas that carried the ball, I believe. Stopped by number nine, Mitchell Dean who we've seen in on a number of stops for Smith Station tonight. Brings up a second and seven for the Tigers. From the Panther 14 yard line. Lester under center again. Thomas and Reese in the backfield. Everybody moved but the center and quarterback. start on the Tigers. But that's just the excitement of some of these young legs getting in there and uh, they're just ready to go block somebody and run the ball in. You know, they would like to put seven point or six points on the board and get the point after attempt and, uh, you know, draw a little excitement to them. I see uh, number 73, Randall Beckman checking into the game. Uh, number 15, Wendell Wooten, a senior, in at one of the wide outs. Try to call some of these names of some of these kids that hadn't uh, seen a lot of action. Lester under center. Thomas and Reese in the backfield. Handoff goes to Thomas, and he goes nowhere. The Panther defense stops him. Uh, looks like about 
the line of scrimmage. Still gonna bring up a third down and a long 14 for the Tigers. Some of the other players I see in uh, number 66, the center is Joey Beckman. Nineteen's Jeff Davis uh, getting some action in at wide out. Number 54 is Lonnie Richards, another senior. Lester goes over the left side. Uh, had a little running room to start off with, and then they closed the gap on him real quick. A little quick snap there, and uh, Lester just takes off and scoots around the left side, but uh, he goes nowhere. Saw number 15, uh, Wendell Wooten. I don't know if he was uh, if it was designed running play, but he was running out of, in the end zone by himself, waving his hands. With 7:07 to go in the fourth quarter, the Tigers take a timeout. Uh, as we said a while ago, Tigers still lead the ball game, 35 to zero over the Smith Station Panthers. And uh, this whole fourth quarter, you know, we're really starting to see a change in legs come in, get some of these other uh, guys in the ball games, get them in there, a little playing time. Uh, some of them are seniors, and uh, some of them are uh, sophomores and juniors, and this is gonna be good for the Dothan Tiger team next year. Uh, some of the other other names that we, uh, we mentioned, Michael Dees earlier, I see number 75, Gray Scott. And it looks like with a fourth down, from the 16 yard line, Coach Kelly is going to send uh, Drew Johnston in. That'd be Josh Lashley. I'm sorry, Josh Lashley's going. I like that. I got to correct you on it one time. Hallelujah. 37 <laughs> 39, either one of them, we both got confused. That is right. Okay, my year has been made now. <laughs> Ball is going to be spotted about the 23 yard line. It'll be a 33 yard field goal attempt. A little line drive that he missed left. It looked like he just missed hit the ball. And I tell you, the, the, you know, the moisture, the dew is settling down pretty hard. And I'm sure that ball is a little bit wet. And uh, Josh's cleat was probably wet also. Number 57, Byron Thetford in. Uh, another senior listed. Uh, was in doing the snapping that time, as we usually see Derek Creekmore doing the snapping for the extra points and field goals. So Smith Station will take over first and 10 from their own 20 yard line. Seven minutes left in the ball game. There's a low snap. Stringer back to pass. He finds number two, Jared Ashford who rest, uh, settled into the middle of the zone and is able to uh, make the catch. And John Hughes came up and made a big stop as we had a missed tackle across the middle of the field, but Hughes uh, was able to get across and stop it before any uh, further gain was made. So another good job there. As we see on the defense now, we've got some fresh legs in. Stringer back to pass. Ball intended for number nine, Dean. Going to be broken up by Foster and number 49 is Tyree Tucker. And I tell you, he had to get that ball released quick because uh, John Hughes had him in his sights and he was bearing down on him hard. Almost blocked the ball, but then again, a split second longer, he's a sandwich for Hughes as he's coming in. Second 10. Springer gets his pass off to Cox over here, and I think I could see that coming by Paul Reeves, number six. As he saw Cox, he allowed him to catch the ball, and then, like I said, boy, there was that crosshair look, and did he lower the boom on him. Reeves and Cox, uh, we've seen uh, getting together earlier as the Paul Reeves had the big block on Cox on the touchdown earlier, and uh, Paul Reeves. Welcome, Mr. Cox, to Dothan, Alabama. Stringer on the third down in full play. And there was a good open field tackle by number three, Tyree Dury, who did a great job on his coverage. I can't tell who the receiver was, but he, whoever he was, he's down over on the far side. But he 
did pick up the first down. It's going to bring up first and 10 for Smith Station at the uh, Dothan High 39 yard line. Stringer's in the gun, drops back to pass, gets his pass off to number one Lockhart over on the far side, about uh, 35 yard line. He's able to turn and fall forward to about the 33. Fred Foster made the stop for the Tigers, but Tyree Dury shot by there like a rocket. He was fixing to pick that ball off and see just how fast he could run out of the south end zone, but he missed it. Dothan High doing some mass substitution, and we don't have near enough men on the field for the play, but a good job by number five, Jeremy Dent, to come over as the pass was completed to number four, Cox. We're going to give them the first down there as we're going to be penalized for too many men on the field, uh, which would give them an automatic, uh, for, or not an automatic, but the, the spot will be across for the first down, so the Panthers will pick up the first down. We've only got 10 men on the field. If we got too many on the field from the play before, it was uh, that uh, there were four or five guys running off of the field. Tigers only have 10 on the field now. Well, there we go. Got number six, uh, 76, Chris Hurt coming back into the ball game. I think maybe we only had 10 men on the field for the actual play, but they they whistled us for the uh, guys that were coming off the field because they didn't get off in, in time. First and 10, Smith Station from the uh, Dothan High 28 yard line. Stringer in the shotgun, drops back to pass. He throws to a wide open receiver. Number 25 is Sean Allen. Well, and Entrell Adams, the safety, slipped down. When he saw him open, he slipped trying to get to him, but there was nothing he could do. And then by the time he got there, the catch was made, and uh, the receiver had his footing and just got around Adams. Allen gets the ball down to the one-yard line, so the biggest threat of the night for Smith Station thus far. And Dothan High will take a timeout as we've had some confusion and uh, substitution and... And uh, Coach White is going to take a time out and uh, get these guys off the field, talk to them for a minute, and uh, I'm sure that uh, with 4.56 left in the fourth quarter, they want to preserve the shutout. Well, they would like to, but it's, uh, you know, the big thing about it is the offense and defense for the Tigers have played a great game all the way through this ball game, and they've uh, got a good lead. You know, so uh, giving up a touchdown here other than giving up the preserve. And I paused there for just a second. I believe now it's actually early into the fourth quarter from what I heard off of the telephone conversation. Uh, Enterprise Wildcats are trailing Central by a score of 20 to 14. Uh, they did manage to score in the third quarter to draw a little bit closer, so uh, just wait and see how that outcome is. Uh, but anyway, as we said, the shutout, uh, really not that worried about now. They're giving these uh, other guys some playing time. We see the first teamers back in for the goal line. First and goal from the one yard line for Smith Station. They uh, got the back stacked in a, in a power eye. The give us to number nine, Dean, over the right side. and. He picks up maybe a half a yard, if any. And I couldn't tell. He was, there were so many people in the backfield and on the line and everything. I really couldn't tell who made the stop, but they stopped him from going into the end zone. Something we haven't seen very much tonight is the Panthers are in a huddled offense. Second goal from the one-yard line. Back's in the power eye again. Dean is the deep back. They're going to give to Dean, and he's going to power his way into the end zone for a touchdown. The Tigers had him blocked there from going into the end zone, and it looks like he just had enough uh, uh, strength and body movement that he was able to lunge forward and go across the line along with two of the Tiger defenders, but he had enough uh, speed and momentum as he came across the left side of the line to get in for the 6 4 for the Panthers. So number 85. Jeff Carrero in the attempt, the extra point. It was a low snap. Good job by the holder to get the, the ball on the tee and the kick's up and good. So with 419 left in the fourth quarter, Dothan High leads Smith Station 35 to seven. Well, you know, you go back and talk about uh, what the uh, starting defense and all, when they went in, 
you know, they wanted to preserve that shutout, and of course they want to keep the scoring as low as possible uh, because the, the points that the defense has allowed all year has been very minimal. I think you said earlier in the game, what was it, 14, 16, 18, 19, something? I'll keep adding them up here in a minute and I'll get it. Uh, but the defense is really, on some of these powerful offenses, has really shut the opponents down. Yeah, 16.1 uh, points per game for the Tigers as an overall average. And at home, they're only allowing 14.3 points scored against them. So uh, as we said before, and as we've talked about all year, the Dothan High uh, defense, really, they are a powerhouse and they are strong and tough to beat. And they've proved it throughout the year even though we've had some bad offensive breaks that have cost us some ball games, the defense has always been there. And uh, Carrero set to kick it off. Caleb Dick back deep for Dothan High. He takes it about the two yard line, is able to stop before he goes into the end zone from the touchback and uh, actually gets a decent return out to about the 22 yard line. And a Jeff, good job of returning the ball. While we got just a second, since your little girl came up here, if I don't, my kids watch this playback week in and week out, if I don't say hello to Carson and Hannah Brook at the house, then they're, they're not able to, being four and two, they don't understand why they can't come and, and stay with daddy during the ball game, but uh, uh, I miss them while I'm here, and uh, they're ready to, I guarantee you they'll be sitting there waiting to watch uh, Friday night football to find out what all the high schools did whenever I get home. Well, you better tell them a hello and uh, for giving up daddy time to come up here and uh, actually for me to join you. Tigers take over first and 10. Uh, looks like we got a new quarterback in, number one, and we do not have his name, so I'm not for sure exactly who that is. It's in for the Tigers now in the QB position. But as I was saying, uh, for you to come up here and do this on every home game this year. It has been definitely a privilege to be here with you. I'm glad that I got the opportunity to do it, and it just so happened I was in the right place at the wrong time when you came down and asked about it. So, uh, But it's been fun, Ron. I, I really enjoyed it. And I, I feel the same way. I sure do appreciate you being there and uh, coming up here and holding my hand throughout the season here. And I hope I hope it's not over as I talked to the guys at Scenic Cable uh, earlier in the week and they were asking about uh, what the what the outlook was for the playoffs and uh, there's a possibility that if Oakland High is in the playoffs that they may uh, may cover some away games, but they'll surely come back and cover the home games. Yeah, that'd be great. Maybe they'll use uh, the two of us to go along with them if they do that and travel over, because it is fun being up here and doing it. It's a uh, little different light on the ball game, and it's fun doing it. Tigers third and 11 from the 21-yard line of the Panthers, 247 remaining in the game. A little pass across, oh, almost picked off across the middle. Michael Dees was the intended receiver. The ball was knocked down by number 55, who we don't have his name in the program for uh, Smith Station. Michael Dees was wide open, standing back in the middle of the field about the 35-yard line. And that ball's got a little bit of height on it. Uh, Michael Dees is off to the races then. Nonetheless, though, the ball was batted down, so it brings up a fourth and 11 for the Tigers. Showing punt with 240 remaining in the ball game. Tigers still leading 35 to 7 over Smith Station Panthers. Good snap, bobble, but he is going to get the punt away. The ball actually hit at about the 44 yard line of the Tigers and then bounced forward and then uh, kind of had a kickback on it comes back to about the 46 yard line and that's where the Panthers take over first and 10. Uh, that was number 53, Justin Newby, a sophomore snapping. I believe, or is that number 83? That was Michael D snapping. So he got his jersey tucked up in his shoulder pads. Got a good snap and uh, just mishandled back there and it looked like he was fixing to get happy feet but uh, saw he was able to, had enough time to get the ball off. First and 10 Smith Station from the Dothan High 45 yard line. 
Stringer back to pass. A good stop made by Tyree Tucker, number 49, across the middle as the receiver catches the ball. Pass was complete to number 47, Chris Williams. Tyree looked like uh, Reeves on that play. He just kind of stood there, let him catch it, and then tried to drive through him, just like you're supposed to do. Pickup of about seven yards. Bring up a second and three for Smith Station. Minute 50 to go in the ball game. See Emmanuel Godfrey in at linebacker, number 42. Stringer back to pass. Ball is intended for number 14, who we don't have a name for, but uh, is incomplete. Number 95, Dustin Collins into the ball game. 97 is Marquevis Henry. Third and three, Stringer back to pass. He gets the ball off to uh, his receiver. The ball is stripped away over there on the far side. Looks like Dothan High's got the ball. I don't, I couldn't see who came up with the ball. Yes, they are giving the ball to the Tigers. Maurice Adams did a good job defending him and jerking the ball loose on him as uh, Kenny Reese came in and recovered the fumble for the Tigers. Uh, a great job there. You know, Maurice Adams, we talked about him earlier in the year on special teams coverage, doing a great job. So with 127 left in the ball game, Dothan High leads 35 to seven. And uh, I tell you the way the when the Tigers go out, number one, I want to say that's the uh, ninth grade quarterback that this year I watched the ball games. Of course, my son Jordan Speed was on the ninth grade team, and I believe that's their quarterback, Ron, which is a ninth grade, a true ninth grader. He comes out around the right side on the speed option. Got some good blocking there from uh, number 40. I can't tell who that is at fullback. And it looked like number 20, Anario Thompson, came across and helped out. He did not manage to get out of bounds, so the clock is still running. Tigers honestly really don't care at this point in the ball game, leading 35 to 7. 50 seconds to go in the ball game. Got a fumble on the play, and it looks like the Panthers are going to pick up the ball this time. A little mishandle on the option. Uh, nonetheless, uh, the Panthers will take over first and 10 from the 41 yard line of the Tigers with 39 seconds to go in the ball game, trailing 35 to 7. I see some of the fans starting to file out. With 39 seconds left in the ball game, as uh, they're rushing to beat that traffic. Now we got another hanky. Gonna be a legal substitution. I love it when the announcer upstairs agrees with us, or we agree with him. You know, I want, Ron, I want to take this little second right here to uh, also thank the guys that have been out here running the camera throughout this year, Mitt, Steven, uh, all the guys that have been out here. They've done a great job, and we've enjoyed accompanying them to the home games of the Dothan Tigers. Uh, Scenic Productions, Mr. Terry Duffy and company. Stringer on the first down and long back to pass, and uh, ball intended for number one, Lockhart. And Maurice Adams saw that ball coming, and he looked like he was uh, trying to catch him a stake. Boy, he was waiting on that one. We'll bring up a second and 15 for Smith Station from their uh, from the Dothan High 46-yard line. 30 seconds to go in the ball game. Tigers still leading, 35-7. Still looking for a little help from the Enterprise Wildcats who were trailing a while ago at the start of the fourth quarter, 20 to 14. Well, Enterprise got a, got a little bit to play for as if they lose the ball game. 
Let's see. Uh, action Ball on the field. Again. Ball's loose as there was a mishandled handoff, it looked like. Ball's rolling around. I believe Smith Station did retain possession. Anyway, uh, as I was saying, Enterprise does have something to play for. As uh, if they get beat tonight, they lose the number one spot in the region. Exactly. So it throws them into a position where uh, they need to win to regain number one spot. If not, they will move down. Auburn will move up into the number one team in the area. And of course, if uh, Enterprise does not win, as well as falling out of number one ranking in the area, that will also uh, knock the Dothan Tigers out of the chance at postseason play. So a lot riding on both of these ball games uh, from Enterprise. Apologize for the break is the Smith Station film crew. Uh, somebody unplugged our power over there, so we shut down. But what we were saying as our uh, enterprise has something to play for, uh, for the number one spot in the region. And uh, we'll be waiting to hear the outcome of that ball game as uh, Dothan High held up their end of the deal tonight, doing what they had to do, coming in and uh, manhandling Smith Station. So, uh, a great defensive and offensive game for the Dothan Tigers, uh, which uh, they put together a good stand on both sides, which we really haven't seen both of those ends come together all year, Ron, and they did a great job running the ball all game and defending as they've done all year with the defense. So we don't know if we'll be back with you anymore for the 04 season, but uh, we, uh, we'll be in Spain Park next week uh, watching the ball game. So uh, we'd like to say that uh, if we don't get to come back, I'd uh, like to thank the guys out on the field for the effort, and uh, it's, it's been a good ride. We've enjoyed it, and I hope we get to uh, continue on and uh, see some more of uh, Entrell Adams at quarterback. So uh, for Jeff Speed, I'm Ron Herring from Ripu Stadium in Dothan, Alabama. The final score is Dothan High 35, Smith Station 7. <laughs>